Hey everyone, Ryan Ponce here with episode number 11 of our Real Estate Roundtable. I got Fabio here and Carl as well. And uh, today we're going to be covering a few topics. We're going to cover for sale by owners. Um, what's the benefit? Why are people doing it right now? There's, it seems like there's more people thinking about doing it. And then um, the next thing we're going to talk about is the lending industry and how um, things are changing. And on top of that, how busy they are and why that affects you. The last thing we'll talk about is uh, are the home tours. Um, we kind of hit a roadblock on that and we'll discuss that later. So first thing um, we're gonna talk about is for sale by owners. Um, so for sale by owners are people who try to sell their home without using a real estate agent. Um, it seems like it's becoming more and more popular, right? I don't know if it's because people are reading the news articles and seeing how hot the market is, but there's a lot of do's and don'ts with, with trying to sell your own home. So I want to talk about that a little bit, but I think Carl, you said that you had someone that, uh, that was looking at doing that. Yeah, he was, he's considering, um, selling his home, but he just wanted to test the market out. And when I looked up the comps for the area, he's like way over it. So I think he's doing himself a disservice because it won't be on the MLS. It's not going to get to most of the people who are looking with, with agents um the reason why home prices are are so good in that area is because they're getting multiple offers and they're they're priced accordingly um and, and the price gets bid up so i mean it's really it's kind of unfortunate because he's gonna shoot himself in the foot at the end i i think yeah i mean people don't understand how much goes into actually selling a home um until we start going over it with them in person. But there, there's a lot that goes into it. But more than anything, I mean, really how your home shows online is, is probably the most important thing. And um, if you're not willing to, if you're gonna sell your own home and you're not willing to put in the work um, and also pay for the, the appropriate marketing, you're just not gonna get top dollar for your home. It's gonna end up costing you more than you're saving. And by the way, talk, let's talk about savings. If you're selling your own home, typically a buyer is going to use a real estate agent. So sometimes you're actually still paying the buyer's agent. You're just not paying for representation on your own, which puts you first off at a huge disadvantage. Second, you're not saving that much money. Um, the standard commissions in San Diego is two and a half percent to the buyer's agent, two and a half percent to the, to the listing agent. And then it goes up to maybe 6% total, which is two and a half percent or 3% to the buyer's agent and then 3%, 3.5% to the listing agent, depending on which agent you use and, and what you negotiate. So commissions usually range between five to 6%. You might be saving 2.5%, 3% um, in representing yourself, but how much are you actually losing? Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I don't know how much popular those really are becoming. I don't know if you guys just had like experiences recently, but. I don't see for sale by owners a lot, to be honest. Well, these are the areas that I work at. That's uh, the problem. You don't see them because they're not advertising I, appropriately. <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, right now with inventory issues, I, I've been looking for for sale by owners. On, I mean, unless they're not advertising online, I won't see it, right? Like if it's just a sign outside the door, I most likely won't see it. But if at least, at least I would say the majority of for sale by owners are savvy enough to put it on Craigslist or Zillow to get some sort of online exposure. And, and I just don't really see too many on the areas that I'm looking at. Um, but if anybody's even having this lightless idea of potentially going for sale by owner right now, I think it's the worst time to do that because all the regulations that have to do with COVID showings, they're opening the doors for all kinds of potential problems. You know, they can get the right person looking for an opportunity to take advantage of somebody. And if they don't have the proper the proper uh, documents and the proper procedure when showings, that can open up a, a whole lot of issues for them. Well, so not only that, but let's talk about like the, a lot of people, they always think like, oh, it's going to be easy because the market's so hot. So we're going to sell our home on our, our own and we're going to save two and a half percent, three percent, you know, minus the marketing costs because they're going to have to pay for their own marketing if they're doing any. But let's just say they save two and a half percent, okay? The problem with that idea is that right now the market's so hot that if you market, advertise, you get 
a lot of people in that are interested in your home, you're likely going to go over list price. I mean, how many, we have, we have several uh, properties right now where we're, we're actually re representing the buyer and it's over list price, you know? So, um, I think that half of our escrows right now are over list price representing buyers. Mm -hmm. Um, that just tells you that like, it's not about, it's, it's about getting the highest net price, not about how much money you save on commission. Right. And on top of that, how much work you're going to have to do to save that money. Like you don't realize that you don't have any access to forms. You don't have any access to the marketing, the websites, everything that, that a professional has access to. Um, not only that, the contacts, negotiating skills, all that stuff. So um, I have a, a family member who approached me and they decided that they're going to sell their own home. This is kind of embarrassing actually, because in real estate, this is in San Diego. Um, they're going to sell their own home. And um, she asked me for contacts with, my photographer, my marketing people, and then on top of that, um, asked me to do a CMA. It's a really close family member of mine. I'm not gonna like not do it for her, but um, you know, I ran the comps for her. I told her the appropriate price. She was thinking of listing at a million or at uh, eight hundred thousand. She said, "I want to get eight hundred thousand. I don't know if it's a stretch. Um, I'm probably likely gonna need to be like around seven fifty. I ran the comps and the comps suggest that her house is worth like 825 to 30. So not only was she under market, but she's trying to save money by not listing her property with a professional and she's underpricing it. So it could have just paid for the, the ability to use an agent. She'd still net the same or maybe more and she wouldn't have to deal with the headache. Yeah. Do you have to get to listen? Um, it's kind of far. <laughs> uh, the house is in Hamul. <laughs> so it's like a 40 minute drive. Um, I usually don't work so far out. So. Do you, you um, can keep but... her just in mind and refer to me. I'll be happy to take that listing for you. Other you said her time. best interest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, I remember that. But, Honestly, like, it, it's just not worth the headache and the hassle um, to try to take that on your own. I, I'm willing to help her out. I figure I'll help her out if she decides that she wants, uh, she wants to list with a professional, then we'll have that conversation at that time. But um, it's just not, uh, I, don't, I don't recommend it. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about are um, the lending industry is kind of crazy right now. We're not really going to talk about interest rates um, other than um, increases in interest rates for certain buyers. But um, right now the lending market is insane. If you talk to any lender out there, they'll tell you there's a ton of refis going on and there's a lot of purchase loans going on. And what that's doing is that's creating a backed up, you know, program basically um, underwriting just keeps increasing the day. So when you're applying for a loan, um, the lender, the loan officer is going to package all your information. They're going to send it to what's called an underwriter. That person's going to look through everything and tell the loan officer what is needed to approve the loan. Um, they're going to look through your financials and all that stuff. Um, that process really backed up. It, you know, I think a lot of people are saying it's now five to potentially seven days, seven business days to get through underwriting, which before it used to be a one to two day turnaround. Um, then it went to like three or four days and now it's five to seven day turnaround for underwriting. Um, and it's just getting worse because there's a lot of people that are refinancing. Um, there's a lot of purchase loans going through. We saw in the last call, the number of pending transactions went up drastically. So what that's doing is it's just creating um, too much work for, for banks to go through all the underwriting processes and everything. Um, so a lot of banks are kind of pulling back. Um, they're in increasing their interest rates for certain borrowers. Um, and, uh, and Fabio, you're talking about FHA. So FHA loan, you can put three and a half percent down to buy, purchase a home, but you're talking about the sweet spot. And I wasn't familiar with this. So I want you to take over on that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the lenders that I work with has like this, uh, I wouldn't say cookie cutter, but it has a program that applies to buyers that have a certain percentage of uh, debt to income and make a certain amount of money. 
and their sweet spot is around the 520 purchase price point on FHA. And that would give them the premium pricing, which is great, right? We just locked somebody in at 2.9% with an FHA loan, which is, I mean, that, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, but the issue with that is there's no inventory for what some of these buyers are looking for in that price point. And the moment they cross that threshold, it comes at a premium, which it puts them, again, it puts them out of that, that monthly budget that they wanted to stay within. So it's a fine line that you're working with uh, in terms of, of making sure that the, the type of loan that the buyer wants is going to work out in a, in the, depending on the price range they're going to be in. Approximately how much is that jump? You know? uh, Percentage wise? I, I want to say at least a half a percent. Oh, so pretty substantial. So potentially from 2.9 up to, up 3. to uh, 3.4. Mm -hmm. um, 3. Yeah, and that's five type thing, but yeah, it makes a pretty big difference on your payment though. Exactly. So that it affects a the monthly payment, therefore making it not as appealing to that type of buyer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, the same thing goes for Jumbo right now. So a lot of banks are, are pulling back on Jumbo. A Jumbo loan is anything over 701500 um, The interest rate spikes a lot higher. Um, you're looking at, on average, probably 3.5%, whereas if you're getting a normal conventional loan under, um, under that 701 loan amount, um, you're looking at 2.75 to, to 2.875. The difference that makes on a payment is really drastic, actually. So, um, you know, the, a lot of lenders, a lot of banks, um, they're pulling back on, on funds available, making the requirements harder to qualify because they have such a large pool of buyers right now that they can't service all of them. Um, so we're seeing that a lot. The, the other thing that I thought was interesting, um, I'm actually in escrow on a property right now, and, and we're going to go to Chase um, and Chase Bank. Um, they actually charge 1% of the loan amount as a fee for self-employed people. So it's called a point. They, they charge a point for uh, people who are self-employed. So just because I'm self-employed, I have to pay 1% of the loan amount mm -hmm. um, as a fee for funding. That's so that's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty drastic. Needless to say, we didn't go to Chase because <laughs> we switched, uh, we switched <laughs> banks. But um, it, that's a pretty crazy jump. A bit, that's a lot of money yeah yeah so um the last thing i want to talk about um the tours we've been meaning to to go tour property to show you guys the interior of some homes in in chula vista there's new construction down there and they're really big houses for reasonable amounts i mean you're talking three thousand uh, up to four thousand square feet um well under a million some of the projects at, you know, some of the projects are going in the 700s, some of them are going in, in uh, the low 800s, and then one of the projects is going in the high 8s to low 9s. But for a 4,000 square foot house with a yard, um, yeah. and that is insane. The only problem is it's hard to get an appointment because they have to do, instead of the, you know, before COVID when you could just go to the new home sales gallery and walk the models, they actually require uh, an appointment and they only do 30 minute slots. Um, so we haven't been able to get in there. Um, Cambria's officially they, sold out. Um, oh, Cambria's sold out. So one of the projects is sold out, and it was probably the most popular project in that was my that, favorite one for sure. In that community, yeah. And uh, they only have the model homes coming up uh, for sale, and they're hoping to know the prices by next week. Yeah, typically no, those prices are no, like at least a hundred thousand over. Or the I, last, would, or the, I mean, the, the models are highly upgraded compared to yeah. like, my, the, the base yeah. like, home that you would get. Last, yeah. last, so one of the, my favorite floor plan was floor plan one at Cambria. The last one to sell was 740. So I can imagine the, the model going for like 820 in, or in that range. Because, I mean, you also wanted to appraise. So um, yeah. I can see it being above the 800. Yeah, I mean, they're highly upgraded, and they also have the backyard done, so, yeah. uh, which the homes, when you buy their homes, they don't do the backyard landscaping, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, there's some value down there, it's just unfortunate we couldn't get in to, to actually show you the yeah. homes, but if you're interested in those communities, uh, let us know, we're really familiar with all the communities, I know, Carl, your parents looked in uh, Skyer, right? 
Yeah, they were looking down there initially. I, I like that community mm -hmm. a lot. Um, just, you know, the landfill is kind of a deterrent yeah. for some people. I, That's I prefer I like. Montecito. Yeah. yeah. And Montecito has a really well-known elementary school. I mean, that elementary school, I think it's rated 10 out of 10 on, on greatschools.org. Well, all schools up there are so, nine, nine and tens. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing is for Iskaya, apparently they, that landfill only has another nine, nine years before they cap it off. Mm. So yeah. when that stops, I feel like it'll be more desirable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I've never really smelled anything there, but I've never really been there, like on a hot day. Um, or I heard it's on a hot day, depending on when the wind. I know people who do there. They there. said that there is days that they, they can definitely smell it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more so. Here, not so much. A little bit more too. I I prefer Montecito. <laughs> um, it's also more established. Montecito is more established. So, but anyway, if you uh, if you're interested in any of those communities, just reach out to us. Uh, our information is uh, wherever this video is posted. All right. Um, do you guys have anything you want to add before we head out? Oh, um, check out my my cooking videos. Yeah. Oh, Carl's so kidding. Carl's been doing these cooking videos, and every time he does a cooking video, I just like. I try not to watch them now because I get too hungry every time he posts <laughs> one. <laughs> um, yeah, so follow Carl on his Instagram. He has uh, he has some cooking videos. They're, they're pretty awesome. Thanks. All right. Yeah. All right. See you guys right. next week. See ya. Bye.